Let's turn the hymn sheets to number 3. God is building a people of power. Sing hymn number six, revive thy work, O God. Revive thy work, O Lord. Ah, 
thank you. We thank you for how you've led us in the course of these days. We are begging you. Do the people of power. Cause your spirit to move through this land. And will you, will you please glorify your name. We are begging you to revive your work, O oh Lord. Give Pentecostal showers. Be thine the glory, thine alone. The blessing, Lord, be ours. We are trust thanking you for the way you have led us this week. We are thanking you for the way you have led us into a very special con con convocation. And we are blessing you because you are the living God. 
want to say that, Lord, you will lead us again. Amen. You will not leave us halfway. You will lead us to the end of this convocation. Lord, you will lead your people to the end of their lives. We are going to have a revival. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So we surrender all and we bow before you. I say, Lord, begin to take your place and have your way. In the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, we bow and say, Lord, have your way. In the name of Jesus. We thank you because you have led us to this point. As we end this meeting tonight, may you continue with us. May you never end it with us. May you continue with us. Or to bring us to the expected end. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank God for this meeting. For the way the Lord has led us. I hope the workshop was all right. The Bible study ended very well. And the operas and the prayer meetings were very, very good. The choir was singing very well. And we thank God for the way he has led us in this meeting. May he be glorified forever. In the name of Jesus. Um, we have come to the end of this meeting. And if you are expecting a message again, despite all that God has spoken in the course of this week, I want to say to you that I'm very sorry that there will be no message. Huh? <laughs> if you have been with us, you know that God has spoken. And if we go and obey all that God has told us in this meeting, it will be great. I don't see what to say again. God has spoken. To speak on top of what God has spoken now will be to complicate your lives. So I just want to end this meeting very quickly by telling you to, please, if you have heard God, if you heard the word of God this meeting, let it not take you back. Let it take you forward. Huh? Let the word of God that you heard this week not take you backward, let it take you forward. Because you can hear the word of God and you will go back. You can hear the word of God and you will depreciate and not increase. That's why the word of God is dangerous. When God speaks like this, better take heed. God has spoken. And to speak more on top of what God has spoken now is dangerous. So I want to just end this meeting by saying to you that if you have found honey, what did the Bible say? Eat. Eat and eat and eat. Eh? Have you found honey? Have you found honey? Eat it. Eat and eat and eat. That's what the Bible said. That's what the Bible said. Eh? <laughs> don't know what the Bible said. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 25. Verse 16. Proverbs chapter 25, verse 16. Have you found honey? Eat only as much as you need, lest you be filled with it and vomit. Let me read again. Have you found honey? Eat only as much as you need, lest you be filled with it and vomit. Is that all right? If you have found honey, and honey is sweet, honey is good, honey is wonderful. Honey is used to depict many things in the Bible concerning the prosperity of the word of God. <clears throat> if you have found honey, what did the Bible say? Eat. Eh? Eat what? Only as much as, is, as you need. As it's going to be sufficient for you. Why? Why? If you eat more than you need, 
even though it's so sweet, it will lead to vomiting. And when a man begins to vomit, he's going to be sick. You vomit now, we're going to look for a doctor for you. If you like, vomit now. It means you're not well again. It's a man who was well, he was doing everything well. And he went and saw honey and began to eat. And he ate and ate and ate and he began to vomit. Now, he's going to suffer for it. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Because he's going to be sick. The doctor will say, don't eat anything again for the next two days so that we know whether your stomach will come back to normal. That is the state in which we have come now. If you have found honey, what do you do? Eat only as much as is sufficient for you. Lest you do what? You be filled there with and vomit. And when you vomit, you know, you vomit all that you have eaten and more. And you have to go to hospital. You have to go to bed. You have to be sick for some days. It's counterproductive to, to vomit. That's why I said, we have taken enough. We don't want anybody to vomit. Huh? We want to go and digest what we have had. Do you understand what I'm saying? If we don't digest what we have had and we vomit at any point, it's dangerous. It's not good to eat and vomit. That the, that's the state to which we have come. That if we eat any more, I, I don't know whether some people are already vomiting. In the spiritual, spiritual world, if you vomit, it takes you back many, many, many days. You lose what you get and you, and you even go back to bed and they're not seeing you until you get well again. Then you go and eat. And if you eat again more than you need, it's dangerous. So I want to encourage all of us there's no message tonight. We must go back. We must not eat anymore, lest we vomit. We are just had all right. If we go and eat anymore and vomit, it will not be good. I just want to give you a few tips to what you should do now. Then we are going to pray and go. Is that all right? Just a few tips. A few tips of what you must do now that you have received the word of God. See, when you receive the word of God, you don't just go away and, and rejoice. No, you don't go away and rejoice. You must make that word to become internalized in your life. You make that word of God a part of you. When you receive the word of God in a meeting like this, I don't know how your life is very sweet. It's very tasty. It's very wonderful. But when you go away here, by tomorrow morning, what happens? By tomorrow morning, what happens? Tell me now. By tomorrow morning, what happens? The choir has sang a very beautiful number. Do you remember it? Not even the song, but the word of God you received in this meeting. If it is not turned into Something that is going to be useful in your life. It will be a, it will be a wasted effort. It will, be, it will take you back. That's why we must. I had this kind of message some years ago and it helped me a lot. Nowadays I don't hear a lot of this kind of message. So that young people, a lot of young people in this meeting, I don't know what you received. We receive at our different levels. Whatever I receive in this meeting is supposed to build you up. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's supposed to add some advantage to your life. But if it does not add advantage and as a disadvantage, it means you are going back. That's what makes many people to go back. They have a good preacher, they have the good word, they have everything, but they go back. I don't want to go back. If we all Go forth on this meeting, what the Lord has told us in these two days, and we just receive it and internalize it, and we go forward. It will be wonderful. But I'm afraid that many of us cannot go forward. 
if we don't take time now. That's why I want to warn you that we must, we must, we must do something to the word we had so that we can go forward. Hallelujah. 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 Look at Genesis, Genesis chapter 12. This will take a few seconds, and then we will pray, and then we will go home. God has been very gracious to us. As the Lord was speaking, I didn't know how many of us were hearing. One of the advantage of a Zoom meeting is that you don't see your audience. Just keep speaking, you don't see your audience very well. And it's a big disadvantage. Here we have secondary school children, isn't it? Secondary school children are here. We have unmarried people here. We have married people here. We have people who are in their 20s, what are they called? Teenagers or 20, 20, young adults, okay. <laughs> we have young adults here. So we have different age ranges. Some people accepted Christ two years ago. Some people are going to accept Christ this night. Some people accepted Christ many years ago. They are not in the same category. And they spoke to us very, very, very tough. And I don't know what you had, but you must go and get against losing what you had. One of the ways to become an entity in, the, in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in Christ is, to, is never to maximize the word of God you hear. Never to maximize it. When you don't maximize the word of God you hear, and you keep hearing, and no, never going forward, it's a disadvantage. So I said, I said no, probably, I've had all these cassettes, and I've, oh Lord, the man is a wonderful speaker, but you didn't go forward with any of the messages. Be unfortunate. Are you hearing me? That's why I said there's no need to rush forward. Let's stop there. Let's check. So I'm going to give you a few tips, just a few, uh, on what you must do now. What you must do now. Um, Genesis chapter 12. Verse 7. Then the Lord appeared unto Abraham and said, to your, to, to your seed, to your descendants, I will give this land. And then he built an altar to the Lord who had appeared unto him. And he moved from there to the mountain east of Bethel. And he pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and Ai on the east. There he built an altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord. There are two altars I see here. Do you see two altars? Or do you see one altar? Many of us don't have two altars. We have only one altar. If you don't have two altars, you are going to miss God. And I'm saying this particularly at this point in your life because we have heard the word of God. God didn't hide his face. God didn't said, no, I won't speak. He spoke. So if you don't maximize what God said now, you'll be in trouble. I see two altars here. One is what? Huh? A communion. Communion altar. The other one is what? Memorial altar. Okay. Communal altar. I don't know these things. I just want to hear you. So I've heard it now. One is a memorial altar. The other one is a communal altar. And we are so used to the communal altar. If you are having your consistent quiet time every day, what are you having? Just an altar. Communal altar. You are just communing with the Lord. And it's going to do you a lot of good. A lot of good. A lot of good. I hope there's, there's none of us here who is not having a communion altar. But beside the communal altar, there is a memorial altar. The first one we saw here is a memorial altar. The Lord appeared unto Abraham and said, to you, to, to you, to your descendants, I will give this land. 
And then he built an altar to the Lord and he, who had appeared to him. So whenever God appears to you, what does he require you to do? To build a memorial altar. <clears throat> if God doesn't appear to you daily, a daily altar is a communion altar. Let me bring your brother's word. And you must have a daily altar. I insist on that. I know the good it does. If you're going to be a teacher, if you're going to be any minister at all, and don't have a, a daily altar, you're wasting time. Are you hearing what I said? If you're just, if you're, if you're just, if you're just hooked up on enjoyment, well, let, let's go and enjoy the word of God. Let's go to the meeting. It doesn't help you. But particularly when God has spoken to you, you must build a what? Memorial altar. Huh? When the Lord spoke to Abraham, I will give this land unto your descendants. Then he built what? An altar to the Lord who had appeared unto him. So that one, God didn't appear to him. He was just building an altar every day. But this one, it was because God appeared to him. And from time to time, God appears to all of us. Once you have in your, your daily altar, your communal altar, God will appear to you from time to time. Either in a meeting or when you are, even when you are having your, your, your personal altar, God can appear to you. And when God appears to you, you should know it. And when God appears to you, you must build a memorial altar. So I, I explained that after this meeting, we must all go back and build a memorial altar. Is that all right? What does it mean? Has God spoken to you? Eh? Yes. Everybody say yes. And I agree. But all these things that God spoke to you on Tuesday morning, if I, on, on Sunday morning, check whether you where, where, where are you going to remember anything. Of course, took notes. Do you take a note? Do you take notes? What are you going to do with that note? Nothing. It's part of your collection. Nothing. You won't do anything with that note. That's why I'm canceling you. When God goes to your library and see a lot of notes, a lot of cassettes, a lot of CDs, a lot of things there, saying, I was in that meeting. They, they, they preach so much. This is a CD. This is a CD. And it doesn't reflect on your own life. Then you're in trouble. Are you hearing me? You're not hearing me. What, when, you, when God speaks to you, when God takes time to speak to you, you know, you know, it's not in every meeting that God comes. In some meetings, when God looks at the crowd, I'm not, going to, I'm not going to speak to these people. The people will just be struggling. So what I mean, God comes and says, let me, let me speak to them. After the meeting, if they don't do anything to the word that God spoke to them, what happens? Next time when they come, he said, what, did, what happened to the word I spoke to you last time? God does all that. So we must build a memorial altar on this meeting. It must be a memorial altar. We must commit, we must, we must have a memorial something about this meeting. That in years to come, we say it was in 19, 2024 that God came to Holy Confession and spoke to me about laboring together. And that message has not left me. I'm still remembering the, the, the one when the servant of God came and spoke so much. Are you hearing me? I remember the four when he came and he changed the topic and spoke so much. And these things are not a joke to me. They are no longer the ordinary word that a man speaks in a, to a cassette or just speaking. And I enjoy it at the point I'm hearing it. After that, it's nothing. May it never be so. Eh? May it never be so. That's why I don't like people who are sitting down in a meeting. They sit down to the end. If you know that you are not going to obey the Son of God, it's not good to hear the Word of God. You know that you're not going to obey what God is saying now. Better go away. Because it's going to count against you. Are you, are you hearing what I'm saying? It's going to count against you. You must build a memorial altar. You must turn on this word that God spoke these days. 
You must take the points that he made to you. You must rehearse them. You must check on those words that God spoke to you particularly. And you must make them to become internalized in your life and become a part of you. Then, God can speak to you next time. See, God has spoken to us so much. And the same God who wrote the Bible can so speak to you every day. But sometimes God is so reluctant to speak to a man when he does not obey what he says. Not, not, not that he doesn't want to obey. It's not that our memory is so small that once you hear the word of God now, you rejoice. But tomorrow morning you forget. Are you following me? Are you following me? You want to make a big profit out of this out of this meeting. You want to make a big profit. You want to you want to you want God to keep speaking to you more and more every day. You must analyze the word of God now. You must build a memorial altar around this world. You must go back tomorrow morning. You must begin to rehearse what God said to you. It can never be a part of you that you had it once. It can never be a part of you. Are you getting what I'm saying? Eh? It can never become a part of you that you, that you had it once. You must hear it, hear it, hear it, hear it until the thing becomes part of your life. I will pray with you now. I will have prayed with you now, but I know some of us haven't got it. This is why God does not speak to us every time. This is why, even in this meeting, God has spoken so much, but it may be Greek to you. God spoke. Kai. Never see. God. Kai. That God. Kai. Kai. God has never. Kai. The word of God was so powerful. Kai. That's all you had. Kai. <laughs> Kai. <laughs> they say, what did he speak to you? What do you take away from the meeting? Kai. I know, I know, I know if you talk out. This thing with God spoke was too much. <laughs> Kai, never see. Kai, it was wonderful. Kai, what is the wonderful thing that God spoke to your life? No, God spoke to us individually. God didn't speak to us the same. He didn't speak to us the same things. You are hearing God. You may think that you are hearing what the other person is hearing. If you go out and say, what do you hear? You see that everybody will say something different. So I'm begging you, I'm begging you. This is an object lesson we must learn now. We used to learn this we used to learn this lesson many years ago. After every meeting, we sit down on the word that God spoke. We go through our notes again. That time there was no cassette. Now there's cassette, even at advantage. You can listen to the cassette, you can listen to the to the, to the, to the YouTube <coughs> to the YouTube. You can listen to the what again? Telegram. You can listen to the telegram. You can put in your, your car and go everywhere. But the one in the car is not even what I'm talking about. You must listen to it and sit down with a pen and paper. You see, our lives are not improving. If the whole world of God has been speaking to us since we have been analyzing them, it would have been different. It could have been very, very different. This is the word of God. God is speaking to you so much. So I think that God just said, let me speak to them again. Let me see how many of them will internalize the word of God. How many of them will go back? Even me, I'm becoming careless. When we are young, how can we go to a meeting and go away without sitting down that meeting again? Without taking time to find out what God said. Look at, look at Jude. Uh, no, look at uh, Ezra. Ezra chapter 7, verse 10. Let me give you an idea of what I'm saying. Ezra chapter 7, verse 10. For Ezra had prepared his heart to see the law of the Lord and to do it to teach statutes and ordinances in Israel. What does that do? He prepared his heart. 
He prepared his heart. You know, if he didn't prepare your heart for this meeting, just came in from work, you didn't pray, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't seek God, you didn't say, God, please, when, you, when I come to this meeting, I'm ready to hear your word. Just came in, and God has spoken profusely. Maybe it's only one person he was speaking to, but we're in the company, of, we're in their company. When God went to anoint David, how many people did he see? He saw Eliab, he saw Abinadab, he saw all of them. He said, I've refused them. This is not the people I came for. I told you to call a party and invite many people, but it's not for many people, it's for one man. That's how God works. This whole meeting may have been for just a few people. But I've determined that I must gain from the meeting. I've determined that I must gain from this meeting. So I'm not going to finish with this meeting to today. I saw God speaking profusely, profusely. I said, God, I've never heard you speaking like this. Ah, every meeting, the Lord will come again. Every meeting. I said, God, something is happening. Are we expecting a revival? He didn't answer me. I know now that except you listen properly. Look at Ezra. For Ezra prepared his heart. Look at how Ezra became a man of God. He did what? He prepared his heart. He didn't go like anybody in Israel. Some people just went to the meeting. Ezra prepared his heart. Hallelujah. He prepared his heart. He sat, he, he prayed. He asked God to show him mercy. In the days of Ezra, how many people will have to hear the word of God? They were in captivity. This man determined that I must be a scribe. He determined. So he prepared his heart. Other people were going to everywhere, doing many things. Ezra prepared his heart. He said, I'm, this heart is for the word of God, not for anything. He prepared his heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To seek the law of the Lord. To do what? To seek the law of the Lord. To seek it. This law is, is for everybody in Israel, isn't it? But then not everybody benefited from it. Many people are still committing sin. Only a few people. He prepared his heart. Ezra was a great man, a very great man. When he was going, when he was leading the people out of captivity, the, the, the king gave him a lot of money because he was anointed by God. Many of you think that the anointing will come upon you anyhow. No, it's not going to come anyhow. The word of God has no place in your heart. Forget about the anointing. He prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And to do it. To seek the Lord, Lord, and to do it. To every word of God that I seek and find, I must do it. And finally, to do what? Finally, to do what? Do you see a progression? Do you see how the man was quietly? He didn't become a teacher overnight. Some of us take things for granted. I know many of you are young, and I thank God for the young people who have come to this meeting. When I saw some of you very young, in the secondary school and the university, I thank God. I say, God, it means that you are trying to help a generation. These boys are growing. These boys are growing. I say, may they not miss at any point. May they not become careless. They come to this kind of thing. They sit down from beginning to end. Not just because they are going to eat or anything. I say, may they sit like this. May this voice who I'm seeing here sit like this. May they become inquisitive like this forever. May they go through this thing we are seeing. May they determine that they will teach the word of God. But to teach the word of God, you must first of all obey it. Then you must seek it. Then you must find, find it. Are you with me? You are not with me, oh. 
You are with me? So what are you going to do about the word you have had this weekend? For Ezra had prepared his heart. You must prepare your heart. So if you didn't prepare your heart and the Lord was speaking profusely, you have missed it. We didn't prepare for this meeting. The Lord was speaking profusely. Oh my God. Oh my God. You think that the Lord speaks like this every time? Do you think that the Lord chooses to speak like this any time? That some meetings you go, no matter who the preacher is, nothing happens. But when the Lord chooses to speak to a group of people, because he has hope that some of them, but they did prepare their hearts to come to the meeting. What happens? You are you're already out. To seek the law of the Lord. So as they were preaching, some of us are taking notes. When I look at your notebook, I know what, I know what kind of person you are. But I thank God that it's not the notebook, it's the CD, it's the Zoom, it's the, I know that things are good. That even if I miss the word of God, I'll go back to YouTube. That's an advantage. That I will get it again. Even though I didn't take notes. But if you are taking your notes up to now, I congratulate you. Hallelujah. What did they say on the second day of the meeting? Je, je, je. You, can have, you, <laughs> you can never remember what they said on any day of the meeting like that. Your head is not like a, a magnetic brain. You can enjoy it here. Why we live here? And your wife annoys you, said, take time. I just came from a meeting. I came from a very serious meeting. And the Lord spoke so much. Be careful. I'll pack out. Oh. I don't want to. Instead of marrying you, I'm going to hell. Let me not marry you. <laughs> you see, you didn't hear the word of God. <laughs> you didn't, if you heard the word of God, you wouldn't be saying such things. Hmm? Ezra. I thank God for Ezra. This is all Ezra did. And he became a teacher in Israel. He became a man that could influence the king. A man that could influence anybody. He didn't beg, any, he didn't beg the king for troops to lead this army home. He said, I trust God. He organized everything. And he led the world back to, the, to, the, to Israel. What manner of man is this kind of person? What had they grow? Ezra was not the only person in Israel. He was not the only priest. But Ezra did something. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? I wish you would be special to God. I wish you would just become a special person. That when God is speaking, you give a David, say, call the whole families of Jesse, call all the people of Israel so that they won't suspect what you are doing. After you finish with the people of Israel, go to Jesse's house. Call his sons one by one. And Samuel was a prophet, a seer. Say, surely they lost an Surely, surely, this man, I can't miss it. The man looks correct. Wearing a gray suit. Hey, God, you are wonderful. And God had to shout. Somewhere. That man you're trying to know that I refused him. Ah, you refused him? That's how somewhere gone for seven people. Say they are one in many. A small boy with the sheep in the field. He went to the field and got somewhere. He didn't bath. Just appeared. With his guitar. They anoint him. He's the one. When you research things, do you learn your lesson? I thank God for this instruction that is given is gave to us this week. I'm praying that this instruction will not 
count against me in the kingdom. Because this instruction is going to count against many people. It's going to count against many people. I thank God. The man who was speaking to you throughout this week would have asked him to give us his experience. Tell, tell, tell us how he traveled with God. Up to now, I have asked him. I have told you that I have not changed. I am still a student of the world. That's what made the difference between me and others. So my friends, we have come to the end of this meeting. But we must build our memorial altars. Are you hearing me? If you are not going to build a memorial altar, you can go now. We are finished with you. Because it's a waste. Say, but God spoke in this meeting, spoke in this. What did you gain? What happened to you? I know the way God was speaking in this meeting, God is going to ask everybody to give an account. Say, but Lord, you know that this, this, this social media, early in the morning, I have to call my, my, my supervisor, I have to do this. It doesn't matter. You must make time for this. You must build your memorial altar, you must build your what do you call it? Communion. You must build your communion altar. <laughs> Me, I'm going to build my altar. Whether it's communion or not, I'm going to build it. You cannot stop me from going to my altar every day. This Bible, I'm going to read it, read it, read it, read it, read it. I know the nature of the Bible. The Bible is not something that you can keep and say, I know it. You must keep knowing it and know it more and more and more. But that's not even the word I'm saying. What I'm saying is that yes, it must be a memorial altar. That when God speaks to you pointedly, you must go back and say, Lord, I'm going to stay on this word. I'm going to seek it. I'm going to obey it. And then I must teach it. See, if you teach a word that is not yet your own word, you're a foolish person. If you go and teach this thing we have heard this week, just go tomorrow morning and teach it. You know, from the book of Matthew chapter 9, the Bible said, laborers are few. Hallelujah. And you start teaching. Say it again, laborers are few. They say, laborers are few. Say, you see? See that we're not many. So you must, you must, you must. You see, you are foolish. You're a good teacher. But your teaching is making no meaning because it are not, it's not part of your life. So I want to ask all of us, no matter how busy you are, no matter, how, no matter what is going to happen to you, you must take time. You must devote some time for this meeting. You must build a memorial altar on it. And you must. Maybe I'll take one more example because it is only time, it's just time to pray. Let me take Luke chapter 4 and show you again that this word where is the story of the of the sower? In Luke, Luke chapter 8, is it? I think in Luke chapter 8. Mm. Luke chapter 8. If you look at verse 4 to verse 8, the story is told of the soul who went to sow seeds. And some fell on the what? On the what? On the wayside. Some others fell on the rock. And as soon as they as as it sprang up, it withered away because it had it lacked moisture. And some fell among thorns. So the wayside, the rock, the thorns, none of them produce anything. But others fell on good ground. They sprang up and he did a crop of 100, 
on a during a crop of a he a crop a hundredfold. When he said this Things he cried. He who has ears to hear, let him do what? I wonder whether I have ears that hear. After this kind of wonderful meeting, if you have ears to hear, you could have heard. I don't know whether many of us here at all, including me. Tomorrow you can get very busy. They will draw an assignment for you for the whole week. You are preaching here, you are preaching here, you are doing this, you are doing this. And you forget that <laughs> you have not analyzed the word of God you had. Amen. 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 And the parable was explained. Let me just read verse 15 for you. So you know that one quarter of the seed that was sown only bore fruit. The quarter didn't bear any fruit. Some even tried. They grew. And they were choked by the cares of this life. The thing that destroys the word of God in your life is, is so many. And we must take time to remove these things from our lives. But the, the ones that fell on the good ground, verse 15, are those who have heard the word of God with a, a noble and good heart, kept it in, and bear fruit with what? Patience. Verse 15. Let's read verse 15 again. Read it in your Bible so that you will see what we are saying. But the ones that fell on the good ground are those who haven't had the word of word with a noble and good heart, keep it and bear fruit with patience. Hallelujah. Huh? They had the word. They did what? They kept it. And bore fruit with patience. It's not easy to bear fruit. Not to be a fruit. They kept watching it. They kept watching it. They kept removing obstacles. They kept they kept fighting against rodents until the thing grew to be a fruit. Only one type of fruit. This, this one. My friends, there are going to be checks on this thing. Checks, checks, checks. Lord is going to check it. If you bear fruit, we know. If we don't bear fruit, we know. So I want to stop it here. And I want to wish you well. I want to wish you well. <laughs> I want to say to you that it's not impossible. It may look difficult, but it's not impossible. And if you, if you dare to trust God, God will help you. If you dare to say, God, I trust you, God will help you too much. We live in a day when there are so many problems. You soon go and pursue money, pursue this, pursue this. By pursuing these things, you don't get them actually. But if you pursue the word of God, you will prosper. <coughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So, Brent, let us persevere. Let us do what we should do now. Let us not disappoint the Lord. Let us not say, Lord, I don't, I don't care. Let us go forward with him. Let us see what he will do. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So we are going to pray. We are going to pray. I don't know how to pray this prayer. I wanted to pray... Pray diverse prayers today for you. But you are going to pray by yourself. You are going to pray for those who are sick. You are going to pray for those who are in every condition of, every, every human condition. By your head. By your head. First of all, pray that Lord will send laborers into his vineyard. Pray. Trust God. Pray. 
that God will send laborers. The harvest truly is plenteous. Laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of harvest to send out laborers into his vineyard, to his field, into his harvest. Pray this prayer. Because if you pray it, it means you are committed. If you pray it, it means you are going to be sent eventually. Let us bend down. Let us bow down. Let us beg the Lord. The brothers are few. Ask him. Say, Lord, I beg you, I beg you, Lord, send laborers into the field. Send laborers. The harvest is truly plenteous. Laborers are very few, very few, very few, Lord. Send laborers. Oh, Lord, send laborers. Send them, send them, send them. Convert them, send them. Send laborers, Lord, into the field of harvest. To one, harvest the field. Lord, thank you because we know that you are going to answer this prayer. Nigeria needs laborers. All over the world, we need laborers now. Laborers into one work. Oh, Lord, not laborers who are going to cause confusion. Laborers who are going to, 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 to go into the work of God. With all they have, with all, all the reserve they have. Lord, please, oh God, please, please, please. Please. Send laborers. The laborers are few. Send them, Lord, send them. Send them. Pray that God will send laborers. Le poso koto lo prasa kata ye makete rimos kono mo shantalam bras kana ma sheriba kuri makanda ye teriba kuru mo shantalam bras kana ma sheri makuri makanda la riba kuri ama sente limbros kana ma sheri makuri makanda la la prose kete limbros kana ma shete limbros kono mo shikete limbras kana ma sheria Lord please please send laborers send laborers. Send them. The work must be finished. The work must not be left undone. Send laborers. Send laborers. Who are ready to dirty their hands. Lord, you, you know the laborers. We have heard about laborers in this meeting. Send laborers. Send them. Lord, send laborers. Are you praying for yourself? Pray for laborers. Pray for laborers. Then pray for yourself. Pray that God will not allow you to miss him. We have had a lot. We have had a lot that God will not allow you to miss him. You also you also. Go into the vineyard. Even at the, at, the, at, the, at the 11th hour. You also. Pray. 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 Pray that the Lord will not leave miss you. That the Lord will help your life. That you will, you will, you will go back after this meeting and you meditate on the Word of God. You will, you will, you will, you will, you will spend time. <clears throat> you will, you will, you will go into the Word of God again and build an altar. All the Word that God has sent to you this weekend, you must, you must pray that you will not disappoint the Lord. You will not disappoint the Lord. That He will find you faithful. He will find you at the spot. If you throw away your social media for this week, it doesn't matter. God is ready to do his will. Oh Lord, please help us. Please show us mercy. 
please, you know the nature of our work. You know the kind of lifestyle we are built. Lord, lay us on us afresh. Show that only love for God is important in this life. Oh Lord, do not leave us to, 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 to misfire, to miss this opportunity again. Lord, please show us mercy. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Pray. Pray for your discipleship. I saw the story of Opa and Ruth. When mommy Naomi telling them, there's no more, there's no more baby in my womb. Even in their words, you will wait for so many years to marry a, a, a newborn baby. You can go back now and face your life. Opa went back. Ruth clung to her. The mommy, where you die, I will die. Where you live, I will live. What you eat, I will eat. She was seeing something. She was a genuine disciple. Pray. Pray that God will not allow you to be on a genuine disciple. That God will not allow you to be in discipleship for a purpose that you have, of your heart that is not correct. It's not correct. Pray. That God will not allow you to misbehave. Lord, help me. Lord, show me mercy. Lord, please, O oh God, help me. Build me up. All the experiences you have ordained for me to pass through, Lord, even if I'm discouraged, Lord, pass me through them. Bring the, bring the test I must pass through quickly. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Help me to renew my discipleship. In the name of Jesus, let me be a root. Let me not be an upper. Lord, help me. I will go to the end of my journey. Even my disciple does not know exactly what she's doing. She, you appointed her over me. I will, I will pursue you. Lord, I know that I'm sure that you're not allowing any untoward thing to happen to me. So, Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm pressing forward. I'm pressing on. Since this is the only method, this is the only way that you have chosen to produce for yourself saints who are going to qualify for any good thing on earth. Lord, I'm ready. Help me. Help me, O oh Lord. Help me. Help me. Help me, O oh Lord. I want to, to strengthen my disciples. I want, to, I want to, 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 to commit myself more to disciples. I want to, to, to report myself more, O oh Lord. Oh Lord, you have given me a human disciple. I want to report to him more. I don't want to be annoyed. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Lord, show me mercy. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I bless and praise you. I glorify and worship you. Lord, make me a good worker, a, a laborer indeed, that is facing my own labor. Lord, help me to, 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 to be in the united labor of God. Lord, help me in the name of Jesus. Help me, Lord. Help me, O oh Lord. I want, to, I want to be in the united labor of God. I don't want to be outside your united labor. Lord, help me. Help me in life to improve. Help me to see Jesus and to become more and more like Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Let us pray that God will save us completely from sin. Save us completely from sin. So that we will not have, we will come to march forward. This idea of living a good life for one week and then sinning again is not good. 
Pray that God will help you to overcome sin completely. Pray. Pray, 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 pray that God will help you to overcome sin completely. That God will help you to go forward, never to go backward. That God will help you to go forward, never to go backward. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Push us forward. Whatever us. Do not let us do whatever we like. Help us to know the seriousness of sin. Never to indulge in it at all. Lord, help us. Help us in the name of Jesus. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Do not let the vagaries of life impinge on us so much that we, we obey it. We obey the Lord. Lord, we thank you. We bless and praise you. Hallowed be your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you. And we praise and bless you because you are the Lord. Lord, this is just a few of the prayers we want to offer tonight because of time. But we have a whole lot of prayer to pray. Lord, help us that when we go back to our closets, we find space to pray the prayers we want us to pray. In the name of Jesus. Lord, help us. Help us to seriously pray after this meeting that we will not, O oh God, neglect the word of God and prayer. That we go forward with you until we arrive at a good conclusion. In the name of Jesus. Help us to take what you have taught tonight seriously. Not to just run away into the bush, but to continue with you on the word. No matter what it's going to cost us, the Lord will not neglect it. In the name of Jesus, Amen. I pray for this one that they will, oh God, go forward. Nobody will go backward. Amen. Nobody will be found wanting. Amen. Nobody will do anything that is going to cause you to be annoyed. Amen. Lord, please, oh God, take us forward. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Now if you are sick in your body, can you stand up on your feet? I want to pray for you now. If you are sick in your body, every, every place you are, in every zone, ill health is worrying you. Ill health is worrying you. Just by faith, just stand up by faith. Just stand up by faith. And keep praying for them. Pray for yourself. You know the particular area of this thing that is worrying you. The economy is so bad. Some people may not even have money to go to hospital. May not even have money to buy drugs for themselves. But the Lord Almighty is, is there. And he will not allow you to, to, to suffer for nothing. Just believe him. Trust him. Everywhere. Just say, Lord, I trust you. I trust you that you are going to deliver me. I'm going to live the length of my days. Don't let sickness have any dominion over me. I'm your child, Lord. I am your child. I refuse that sickness. I refuse it. I refuse it in the name of Jesus. I refuse it in the name of Jesus. But I ask that you will take me, heal me, Make me whole. Lord, I beg you, do not allow me to, to die in this matter. Do not allow me to be wasted in this matter. Do not allow me to waste my money in this matter. No matter what it is, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. It's not going to get worse. It's going to get better. In the name of Jesus. Father Lord, I thank you for these ones who are, who are standing on the behalf of themselves or somebody else, that they have sickness in their bodies. Lord, I pray that, Lord, you will ameliorate their condition. Amen. That you will, Lord, move on them. And that your, your spirit will scatter this thing. Amen. Your spirit will scatter this thing and give them good health in the name of Jesus. Amen. Pray for all the zones where these brothers are standing. 
that Lord, you will not allow the devil. Amen. They will have no pressure in their life. Amen. No matter what it is, I speak to it. Behold, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Behold, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Behold, in the name of Jesus. Amen. I ask that Lord, you will, you will take the glory. And the devil will not, will not, will not have authority over this once again. Amen. Whatever it is called, whatever the devil has called it, whatever the devil has called that disease, I command it to go in the name of Jesus. Amen. I thank you, Lord, for the testimonies we are going to receive. They are going to be wonderful testimonies because you are the one doing it. No man did it. You did it, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. As we go from this meeting, Lord, you have told us what to do. We are going to do it. We are going to change our lifestyle if need be. We are going to, oh God, obey you. Because only in obedience will be something. We are going to march forward and pursue you. All things you spoke to us in this meeting, we will do them. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the way you have been with us in the course of these days. We thank you because you have done a wonderful, marvelous work in our lives. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Amen. Help us to be one of one and one of one another's watcher. That will not let one another go down. That will let one another go up. Amen. Lord, we beg you that we shall be one another's watcher Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, glorify yourself. Amen. Give us grace. Give us strength. Give us all we need to move forward. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.